There are several petroglyphs in Clay County. I have had the opportunity to look at a couple of those. And as a woman of Indian descent, particularly of Cherokee descent, uh, our feeling is that those petroglyphs are put there by Cherokee people. Petroglyphs are just simply uh, drawings or images that are etched or pecked into stone. And pecking is taking a uh, sharp rock or something and actually pecking in the surface and you can see the peck marks around and that was the usual type of petroglyph done in, in Kentucky. An open face uh, bluff that's getting weather exposure is not going to last a long time and there are early accounts, historic accounts of being many more of these sites and many of them being painted and some of them being quite spectacular. Sandstone weathers two ways on the surface and from inside of the sandstone. The surface weathering is just what you would think. Wind, rain, snow, sleet and things like that actually remove the particles of sand on the surface. But the second thing that occurs is even more important is that water within the uh, <coughs> sandstone tends to percolate to the surface carrying minerals with it. When it gets to the surface of the sandstone, it evaporates, leaving the crystals there. As the crystals grow, they pop off the sandstone. So the petroglyph tends to recede into the rock. In other words, it's being freshly made every day, so to speak, making it very difficult uh, to date. I could pick up a piece of burned uh, torch material and draw on the wall and it would be drawn, you know, yesterday, but that charcoal is 2,000 or 3,000 years old. So you date it and it says it's two or 3,000 years old, but that doesn't mean it was drawn two or 3,000 years ago. So dating pictograph and petroglyph sites is extremely difficult to do. The most of the petroglyphs that we see are around what they call terminal archaic or early woodland, which is about 1,000 years BC. The, Native Americans who were found in Clay County area would have included the Cherokee um, and certainly the Shawnee would be the two most likely groups that were in the area. Traditionally, the petroglyph would uh, be for location. They might be um, an event that took place. They may have been commenting on a ceremony. There are uh, people that have studied this and study it with uh, present-day Indians and try to relate what they see now with what might have happened in the past. Syllabary was developed by Sequoia. If you have ever listened to Bitter Tears by Johnny Cash, they're referred to as the talking leaves. And what happened was Sequoia recognized when the Europeans came that they could talk to each other across distance on pieces of white paper and he wanted his Cherokee people to be able to do that also. All Indian communities, including the Cherokee, were totally oral. Uh, everything was passed from generation to generation by word of mouth. So what Sequoia did was to look at a way that he could have talking leaves or a written means of communication. We definitely know Native Americans have been uh, American Indians have been in this area for probably 10 to 12,000 years, if not longer. The Eastern Woodlands people, all of them, passed through Kentucky at various times hunting. But it's also equally true that there were permanent villages in Kentucky. Uh, there would not be petroglyphs were that not so. If you were living four or 5,000 years ago, you were a uh, hunter and gatherer. You were living off the land um, the natural bounty of the land um, in these, um, a lot of these sites may be um, new places you're exploring. They are our way, the Indian way, of leaving our history recorded. Uh, a petroglyph might talk about a hunt, a spiritual quest, a ceremony, travel, but it is the old Indian way of leaving a written record of what was there, what they did, what they experienced. That is our history. Vandalizing a site uh, really does uh, hurt the site, and people tend to do that. Uh, it's, 
John Loves Mary type things uh, occur on a, a lot of these sites. And it's people being thoughtless about them. People write their names on bridges, spray paint their names on bridges. You know, we don't promote that. We don't like people writing their names on in caves and rock shelters anymore. But you certainly see it. You can go to early tourist sites like Mammoth Cave and other cave sites, and you'll find thousands of, of people's signatures and names on there. And you'll find under that, you'll find prehistoric drawings. If, if I know there's uh, prehistoric drawings in a place in the cave, that's usually also the most popular place to write people to write their names historically on the cave. And so there's, there's layers of these uh, um, pictographs and signatures in the, oftentimes in the same place, which makes it hard to, to figure out what's what. It is particularly important as a Cherokee descendant because these artifacts, these petroglyphs, are in the state where I was born, raised, worked, and lived where I was educated. They were left by my ancestors. I see that as a part of my own personal history. All I want to do is find them, record them, and try to protect them. And that's my only mission. So the best way to protect them is just keep locations confidential. One of the things that would be very helpful, I think, and I think the commission feels this way, is educating our young people. Because if we start really educating our young people to the fact that, yes, we did have Native Americans in Kentucky before European contact. Yes, we do have uh, material that they left here. And yes, there are sacred places here and help them to understand that and help them to recognize those places. These are small windows to the past and they're very fragile. And once they're gone, they're gone forever. Native American people have been in Kentucky for thousands and thousands of years. We are still here and we will remain here.